The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved. The role of a woman in the society is to submit. Void control are the pills of the devil. Education is so fundamental to the development of a people. I'm murderous. Simple as that. What am I voting for? Voting will change nothing. Good moon I see Kumo ye. God save the queen. Broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome to Freedom March. My name is Rodney Monker. I'm a former senator here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I'm also a justice of the peace as well in the Commonwealth. And of course, I'm a member of the local Catholic Christian community. My spiritual advisor, Bradley Roll, is here. Bradley, welcome to Freedom Map. Thank you, Mr. Monka. Thank you. It is a joyous day in the opposition progressive liberal party. And for me, as leader of the woman dam, I campaigned and I call on the stalwart councillors and the delegates who are the woman. I said to them, woman, submit yourself to the leadership of the man them. Submit yourself to Philip Brave Davis. Submit yourself to I. Chester Cooper. Submit yourself to Fred Mitchell. And by grab, I had a shock as I move through the Progressive Liberal Party convention over the last two nights. And as I move, and hundreds of the women them hug and saluted their leader, me, leader of the women them, I told them point blank as they frapped me, you accept my leadership by demonstrating a political commitment to vote for Philip Brave Davis, I. Chester Cooper, and Fred Mitchell, I told them point blank that this son, Glennis Hannah Martin, was a wonderful, charming woman. But we are faced with an unprecedented level of FNM inefficiency and gangsterism. And that if they did not give me these three Negro leaders, I was going back home to my party, the Free National Movement, where Papa would be waiting for me and Papa would see me safely into the FNM. So you've left the FNM then? I never left. Well, that's but what praise the Lord, the woman them submitted to man rule. Go this back. is not America. This is not Europe. We just came out of slavery in 1834. And we have to continue to work to build man them leadership as the woman them rise. This has nothing to do with misogyny. Misogyny is a dirty word. But I thank the woman them. May God continue to bless the woman them. And may they continue to submit to man leadership. Lord Jesus, I thank you that in the progressive liberal party, the woman them got sense. They have found within the party man leadership. May the men who are in leadership hold the women on and match them to majority 
rule. May the man in charge and the woman follow. Thank you, Jesus. My prayer has been answered. Man rule. Woman, follow them. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. My name is Rodney Monker, my spiritual advisor. He's a biblical scholar. Bradley Roll is here with me. Bradley, give me a salute, please. There I, you go, Mr. Monker. I thank you. Absolutely. Well, I would want to prefer to this as breaking news. Everywhere I go, Citizens want to give me message to carry to Sabbaths. And I try to say to them, I don't bother with him. I come to do the show, pack up my Johnny bundle, and go home. But you know, I'm always in a trance. And I'm beginning to believe that Sabbaths can read and see when I'm in trance. And so he would have known that in my head, you know what kind of head this is? He would have seen that I have been contemplating and worrying about the thousands of Bahamians all over the Bahamas who are unemployed and they need jobs. I had a Negro woman call me from Abaco. She said, man, you know Sabats? I said, yeah, I know him. She said, man, I need a job. You think you could say little things to him? I said, oh, Lord, I really don't say little things to him. But I will continue to pray for you, and who knows what may happen. <laughs> well, by grab, Sabbath Mussy was reading my mind. It's easy to read. And so he wants me to announce this, that tomorrow, Friday the 27th of October, Island Luck is hosting their second annual job fair at Kendall Isaacs Gymnasium. They're looking for cashers, customer service managers, security guards, and much more. Come prepared for on-the-spot interviews and bring along a recent police record, current resume, and a copy of your valid Bahamian passport. The event is also open to the family islanders. You hear me? You see family islanders. You all are invited. And of course, the time for the event, we're going to start at 9 a.m. But be smart. Go early. Carry a little umbrella. Carry a little breakfast. And camp out. You see? Camp out early. Now you know where the Kendall Isaac gymnasium is well it's a Kendall Isaac gym that's where it is on the sports center it was given to us by the people's republic of Taiwan they used to be called um, China and then of course China got to the Bahamas and the next thing I know all them things the Taiwanese did for the Bahamas our government renounced and denounced them and went with mainland China. But it's important to go there because I'm going to be questioning you about the Kendall Isaac Gymnasium. So when you go there, look for the plaque to see when it was opened. All right? When it was constructed. So for heaven's sake, I don't want nobody telling me they're unemployed and, you know, ain't gone to the job fair. It's tomorrow. Get there early, 9 to 3. And let me give you a story. When you go, always go looking clean. I always do that. I'm searching for a job. I dress right up. Just in case they conclude that I'm stupid, they will say at least it is a stupid man who's well-dressed. So... Go clean and sharp. And while we should not judge people by their patchy clothes, they do. So put on 
nice clothes, even if it's just a blue jean pants and a t-shirt, but make sure, you know, you look crips. And get there early, give a smile, be respectful, even when you are misunderstood, just relax. I always do it. And say a silent prayer and sing a sweet song. That is how it's done. My spiritual advisor, I don't see any vacancy for landscaping. Well, don't forget now, landscaping is not the only thing I do. I have a 23-year career in banking. I was supposed to talk to Sebastian last time he was here and ask him if he recognized the talent I have. But he ain't got no bank. As far as finance, well, I can tell you this place makes a lot of money. Um, you know, they have to count the money. Uh, they have to strap Can you the money count up. people's money? Man, for Christ's sake. All right. <laughs> then the money has... The money has to then be deposited to banks. Uh, he gets sheets, leisure sheets. Do you know this is the sheet. only country in the world where the locals have no bank? Um, I think they probably going to do something, you know. Do you know yeah. this is the only country yeah, that's, where the Negroes that's are in majority, but they're no good? You all don't like change. us. That's going to change shortly. Yeah? Yeah. The change going to come? I think the central bank is going to grant somebody a license but I, I i would not say that right now okay but i think everybody who wants a bank not everybody you um, see the problem you don't believe you know, you in see, banking is already saturated in this country man. that is not true you don't think so we don't have a bank the people them need a bank oh right like how a we bank. had the people spending seven buying back in the day something like that yeah yeah but not like that it's like how brand simnet them got a bank okay you follow? Yeah, I was supposed to tell the boss man I used to be in charge of the bank treasury. Really? You might used to call me the treasury officer. Yeah. Yeah, so I could count Sabat's money. Right. Right down to the penny. You that get? Yeah, absolutely. Well, my spiritual <laughs> advisor, I got a couple of dollars I need you to count for me. <laughs> so, folks, listen. Job fair. Get there early. Kendall Isaac Gymnasium on the sports center. You go there, good, look for good parking. Be cooperative and get the job, all right? And for everybody who gets the job, who knows? I may give you a little prize, so watch out for me. So this is powerful. Well, there was a Negro lady, I'm advised, who was missing in Great Abaco. And people them send me a little message. I say how the woman is missing and... It's almost like if Nassau didn't know. But they say I must contact a Negro man who has a radio station down there. But I hadn't have an opportunity to do so. However, I have been advised, my spiritual advisor, mm -hmm. that they may have recovered the body. Yeah, I think I saw something on social media. I think she, um, um, I think that person has turned up dead. If I'm not mistaken, um, I think there is a story circulating on social media. Uh, and also a photo of this young lady. Really? Uh, which is very unfortunate, you know, Mr. Munker. It's a sad, sad day in this country. How, and, and how, was, how did they expect it or suspect that she was killed? Well, let me just look at this quickly. Look at now, it, this may not be official, writing. right? But this is what I see coming through on social media. It says, breaking news, police have found the body of... Can I say the name? Of course, if they found the bodies. Of Hadiria Boodle. Wow. Who was reported missing earlier this week. Sources in the know said that her body was located in a pond in the Marsh Harbor area. Police is on the scene as the murder investigation has begun. May God have mercy on her soul. This is wow. just, um, you know, it's just sad. Well, Abaco, the oh, FNM boy, has you. two seats. And you would be aware that during the campaign, the leader of the FNM, who's now Prime Minister, has promised to address the issue of capital punishment. We now are figuring out what kind of man Dr. Minnis is. To get your vote, he will tell you the right thing. After he got the vote, well, he pussy-footed. So this is the price we will pay in our society because we are failing to carry out a precedent that was established by the English governor, Woods Rogers. When Woods Rogers came to Nassau, he met a bunch of pirates. 
This was white people who was in charge. They were doing all kinds of things. They was robbing. They were raping. They were committing murder. And they were rum runners. They were doing all kinds of nonsense. Sometimes they set up decoy. They were the days when we didn't have buoy. And with the decoys, you run aground. You smash into a rock. And they looted and pilfered. That's the people here. So most of the Kanki Joes are descendants of these pirates. But in tourism, the tourists them are taught that we, the Negro people, are the descendants of the pirates. Now some of us are. If we can find that we have white people in our family and we are descendants of the Kanki Joe, then some of us are pirates. I wish to assure you that on my side of the family, where we have Kanki Joes, we were Christian. We didn't do piracy. We condemned it. And we run the church. Okay? But some of us, our ancestors, the Kanki Joe people, they did lots of piracy, and they were very good at it. But when the English governor came, he told them to stop it. So what did he do? Outside the point, you know where the point is? The British Colonial Hilton, where they had the well, but an incompetent government allowed them to move the well outside the British Colonial. And that's where Wood Rogers built a wonderful gallows. And he got good ropes. And those who failed to obey the law was tried, convicted, and executed. And at the end of the day, history taught us that Governor Woods Rogers, what did he do as he popped neck? He expelled the pirates and he restored commerce. You heard me? Murder and gangsterism interferes with commerce. It interferes with production. It interferes with economic development and expansion. Because if people are committing murder and they're robbing and raping, well, what do you think will happen? Those who are interested in economic development, in business, they will run away and your economy will suffer. But I thank God for Governor Woods Rogers and may he make it safely into the kingdom because Governor Woods Rogers knew how to maintain law and order against murderers. He knew. He put them on trial and he popped their neck as short as a pipe. But the Negroes, who are the inheritors and the successors to this beautiful archipelago, their name should have been Pussy Fat. That's what their name should have been. Because they're not serious. They're not serious. You mean to tell me in this Bahamas where we know where the concentration of murders are located, ain't nothing we could do? We can't talk to the people. We can't tell them, listen, murder is wrong. Threats of murder is wrong. And if you kill people, we're going to pop your neck. And anybody who opposes that, they safe. Because you cannot have a society where people can commit murder with impunity. It's wrong. So now, the Boodle. Just talked to Brother Boodle last night. Got to be related to her at the PLP convention. When he showed me a charming woman, he said, Monka. She is one of the woman them. And all I wanted to know, did she submit and vote for man? And listen, when the man them assured me that all the women under their management submitted and voted for Philip Brave Davis, I said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Man is wonderful, for life. How the Bahamian woman got plenty sense. People want them to vote for woman because they is woman. You don't, you don't do it like that. You vote for leadership. You vote for political advancement and progress. But I thank God that thousands, or perhaps I should say hundreds, of the women there, they told me how they saw me and said, Monka, we know that we should listen to your advice. But the greatest flattery that I had was a Negro male who lives in Carmichael Road. He approached me, he saluted me, he said, Monka, I heard you. And when I heard you say to vote for Philip Brave Davis, I immediately called my wife and I said, honey, my mind is made up and I shall not turn back. And he said to me, he voted for man leadership. May God bless that young man from Carmichael who heard the cries of a brother who pointed out to him that the proper thing for him to do is to support man leadership. And I was pleased to know that he recognized that this is a battle for the soul of the nation. This is the battle for the soul of a nation. May God bless him. May his wife, his children, and their wives continue to submit to him. For truly, you are a good man. A good man. You're not a, mis a misogynist, eh? What that mean? Eh? What you, is misogynist? You, you Gladys Harlem Martin I, the bus too? I, no. She has been rescued. <laughs> She's been well, saved you, you by that. Philip Brave Davis, Fred Mitchell, and I, I, what I, Cooper mean? Chester. I, Chester Cooper. <laughs> this has nothing to do with sex. Well, and assuming not. it has something to do with it sex, made a woman lay down oh, and the shit. man be on top. Oh, this boy, is freedom, boy. Matt. What is this? The country now has an opportunity to be redirected. And I am certain that Fred Mitchell, as chairman of the PLP, he will build a powerful war machine. So I'm happy to hear it, that finally good leadership is here and made a political battle May the political battle commence and may the progressive liberal party gird up their lines and may the woman them get ready because the Crab Express is on its way. It's powerful. Freedom match. I'll be right back after the break. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. My name is Rodney Monka. I'm a Justice of the Peace. I'm a member of the local Catholic Christian community. And of course, I'm joining the studio by my spiritual advisor, Bradley, I thank God, that notwithstanding the struggles mm -hmm. that you are suffering, and we all face on a daily basis, by virtue of your presence here on the show, I thank God that you continue to come Absolutely. and stand by me. God is in control. Amen. Well, folks, you are aware that the PLP went into convention. 
In the midst of the convention, the lights went off. I believe the FNM was behind it. I believe it. And then, of course, all sorts of skullduggery was taking place. Designed to stop democracy. These things happen. We're living in a gangster country. But I want to show you the headlines in the newspaper and to the people of Inagua. I must salute you. Having heard from PLP delegates who has informed me that an island of 900 citizens go to Island Luck to um, watch Freedom March. Is the, screen, is the screen large enough? Let me know. Because if it isn't large enough, I'll ask the bots then to send a bigger screen. Because I'm flattered that the whole island comes to Island Luck to watch it. So I salute Inagua once again. Now Inagua, I want you to see what the three top newspapers on the island are reporting on this glorious victory of Philip Brave Davis, I. Chester Cooper, and Senator Fred Mitchell. We will do it in alphabetical order. My spiritual advisor, which come voice? The guy. B, B, G, or G? B. B? Yeah. B come before G. You sure? Yeah, so that's Bahama John, yeah. Okay, yeah, so A, yeah. B. Well, the Bahama John Journal headline says, Brave Davis wins big. I want you to see it. Because I don't know when you're going to see newspaper. There it is. Wendell Jones is improving greatly. No longer is he being biased towards the PLP. He's being fair. So that's the headline. Okay? My spiritual advisor after B, which one come next? That's the G. The G? Guardian, yeah. The Guardian? And then the Tribune. Well, the Nassau Guardian says, Davis wins. Chester Cooper, new deputy. Fred Mitchell, new chairman. You see it? Look at it good. And after that, we go to the Tribune. And then the Tribune's headline is super powerful. It says, Brave's New World. Isn't that powerful? Brave's New World. And then the Tribune take an uppercut. And listen to what they say. Chaotic day sees Davis secure PLB leadership. Mitchell and Cooper win election fight. Glennis vows to battle on to change party. So let me show it to you. There is the Tribune. You see, this TV is the largest TV station in the modern Bahamas. You see all this publicity I've given them? Now what I'm going to do is to hold up the three newspaper. If it's possible. Right? How do you mean if it's possible? I got two hands. Well, that's only two. Oh, okay. Go I ahead. have two hands. <laughs> Give me the third one, my spiritual advisor. W you, what are you doing here, man? I want What's the people them to see the newspaper. Hold it towards that camera right over there. Camera one. Hold on. Let me see if I can do this properly right? here. This is great. Okay. Uh, can you see? It? Hold on. Hold on. You hold can on. see it? I okay. want you to point it at camera one, my spiritual okay. advisor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there's the paper. I got it. You all right? Uh -huh. So I want you to see what the headline is. Okay? Uh -huh. Fill up. <clears throat> Brave Davis leading. Isn't this powerful? Uh -huh. So everybody go and buy one of these paper each. All right? Uh -huh. Go and buy it. Why are you holding the Guardian down? Do you want the Guardian? I want candy to make a little money now. You see? Just She's not an thing. investigative journalist. So I wanted to make a little money. So you've seen the newspaper. Now let's look at the election results where Philip Davis, the PLP new leader. So let's look at it. And it goes like this. It's, it's a press statement released the 25th of October. That was yesterday. Uh -huh. On behalf of the trustees 
of the Progressive Liberal Party, election of party officers, unofficial result. Leader, Philip Brave Davis, 1,004. Glennis Hannah Martin, 300. And Troy Gavi, 3. Deputy Leader, I. Chester Cooper, he got 1,226 votes. And Ricardo Smith, he got 69 votes. I want to commend Ricardo Smith because I believe no one should get a free seat. And it is powerful that he entered the race, which caused I. Chester Cooper to break off run. See, Chester knew that Ricardo, I believe, is younger. So he had to train and break off run. And as a result of that, Chester got 1,226 and Smith, Ricardo, 69. Now for the chairman of the PLP, Fred Mitchell got 627 votes. Glendon Roll, the PLP candidate for Long Island, he got 261 votes. And Mr. Obadiah Hercules Welchcombe, he got 419 votes. Then for Deputy Chairman, Robin Dawn Lines, she got 792 votes. And Dr. Eresia um, Herboyne, she got another surname. I think it's Herboyne. I'm getting all the people of Black Village. Dr. Eresia Herboyne, she got 436 votes. So it was a good competition. Then for treasurer, Paul Bevins, he was declared the treasurer. Then on the leadership council, Linwood L. Brown, Forrester Carroll, Kayla Smith Mortimer, and Calvina Small. She, they were all declared on the leadership council. Then the vice chairman, it's, they're still counting. They said they can count it today. The trustees of the Progressive Liberal Party wish to thank all stalwarts and voting delegates for their participation and patience in today's election process. We experienced various circumstances that led to us exceeding today, exceeding today's allotted time. But we are confident that all respective committees and assigned officers ensured a fair and due process. It is our hope that as we analyze today, as, let me read it again. It is our hope that as we analyze today's delay and setbacks, we are able to strategize a more efficient and timely way forward for future elections. We wish to express our gratitude to every individual that presented themselves for the various positions. The increasing amount of candidates demonstrates the eagerness and interest for many to offer themselves for the leadership of our great party. We commend all and welcome them to continuously offer themselves to the service and advancement of our party. Isn't it a wonderful display of democracy, my spiritual advisor? Well, let's hope it was, Mr. Monka. What do you mean by that? Let's just hope it was. Um, People registered. Mm -hmm. Boldly, they approached the nomination center. Yeah, but I hear there were some issues going and, on. And what have you heard? I'll just say it was, you know, well, anyhow, democracy. Well, if the, democracy. Light, if the light goes off. You know, kind of. Skullduggery, what do you call it? Skullduggery? It's BPL. A, lo a lot of stuff is going on, BC. Going on in the dark, you know? Huh? Yeah, BC. Yeah, but you say it's, and, it's and democracy? Okay, so let's the accept that then. Time to get scrubbed. <laughs>
It's in the dark of well, the isn't, night. Isn't it? Why the power keep going off, though? I don't understand that. Yeah, but, it's, but, but that's good for the PLP. It's them who go on yeah. and get that incompetent group from the states. The you lights see? keep going out yeah. at the convention. Well, that's the best time to get crab. What is up, me? Huh? Crab in the dark. Anyhow. So, I've told you that. I congratulate Philip Brave Davis on Yes, I must team. congratulate him, too. Okay. Mr. And Davis, I'm certain that the right Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram must be proud of his partner. Don't forget how the company was set up. It was Christy Ingram and Co. You know who's Christy? It's the former Prime Minister. You know who's Ingram? It is the right Honorable Prime Minister, Hubert Ingram. You know who Co is! It's Philip Brave Davis. And Papa, I thank you that you had the foresight to recognize that one day Philip Brave Davis will become not only leader of Her Majesty's opposition, but the, the leader of the Progressive Liberal Party. And Papa had me <laughs> done all kind of investigation. And every time I go back to Papa and say, Papa, I can find no sin. Papa say, go back. I should have said to Papa, Papa, you find a sin in him. But Papa couldn't find it. And he knew that there was one Negro that Papa could account for. Because don't mind I supporting Philip Brave Davis. I still waiting for Mr. Ingram. I told Philip Brave Davis, I said, I can support you, right? But we remember, I'm waiting for Papa. So I want this party to function properly. Papa! Look how Christy Davis and Co. will soon have three parties, three, three prime ministers from the same law firm. My God is good. What a wonderful thing. Did we discuss the murder of a Negro man here in the capital? No. When, when that was last night? Yeah. No, we didn't. Well, is it in the paper still? We have a Negro male who was murdered in Glennis Hannah Martin constituency. And so the murders go on. Glennis, you have to change your mindset. Murderers must be hanged. Other than that, you will continue to grieve. Look how she knew the young man from a boy, knew his ma. She's been in government all these years and I've not been able to convince her that those who commit murders must hang. Glennis, be careful. Today the blood is on the hands of Marvin James but Glennis, it is time that you drop your position on being anti-capital punishment. You have to stop it. Okay? We need to tell our citizens that we cannot tolerate murder and the solution in reducing the level of murders and murderers is to hang them. That's it. Or there will be no solution. Okay? Come, Glennis. Look at how thou vote. Gone! Because you wouldn't stand strong. And I call on the PLP to go back to the old landmark when the PLP carry out capital punishment. And praise the Lord for Mr. Lines. What Mr. Lines' first name is? The former FNM minister. What's his name? Um, I'm trying to remember now. Javago. You say would you say Mr. Who? Lang. Oh, why don't you say Mr. Lyons? No. Okay. Yeah, Javago Lyons. Javago Lyons. Yeah. yeah. You know, I talk English bad. Yeah. So look what Javago Lyons discovered. He has discovered that murderers once hanged. The level of crime and murder <laughs> dropped low. So that is what needs to happen there. My spiritual advisor, today... I know you can't join me in saying it because you are not as brave an effort as I am. Uh -huh. What do you want me to say? 
I want you to be what, brave. What the papers have already, you got the Bahama Journal, you got the Guardian, you got the Tribune. The people in the Nagui ain't man, got no I newspaper. Mean, who, who else you want to know the if Brave Davis has won? my spiritual advisor, put this camera on me and the spiritual brave advisor. Brave Davis has won the leadership of the Progressive Liberal Party. If it's all over the Bahamas now. What's as brave? <laughs> as an F and M as Congratulations I. Congratulations to Mr. Brave Davis. He would have said, PLP all the way. Can you do that? <laughs> it's like how old, I'm an F and M. I can say F and M all together. Are you an F and M? Of though? course I am. I'm that's, more that's F and been, M but than listen, menace. That's being debated around the country. But let's now. debate it. Whether or not, sovereignty. Whether or not Rodney Munker is an F and M. I am. Or you just like to be in opposition? No, I'm an honest F and M who <laughs> sees the law being broken, and I'm prepared to expose it, while the others in the party are covering it up. That is what I'm prepared to do. At personal risk mm -hmm. and at the threat of debt, because I got a story to give you of an experience that I had here in the studio. My God, for the first time, I am seriously contemplating walking away from this good job. Because yesterday, during the show, Management failed to tell me that there was a Negro female waiting in the parking lot. They failed to tell me. Had they told me, I would have called on <laughs> thousands of Bahamians to come and witness what was taking place. But they never told me until after the show. Lord Jesus, what profit me? To gain this whole world and lose your soul and lose you are one my and only soul. life. What, what profit me? What profit me to expose Frankie under the threat of death? What profit me? What profit me? Where men can sit at my table with lawyer present and threaten me with that. What profit me? What am I doing this for? What am I doing this for? This is a gangster nation. It's gangster. A gangster nation. A nation that is not prepared to respect the rule of law. And when they perceive that something wrongly was done to them, they do two things. One, they go to the police. Two, or they take out civil action. But my life is in danger. I say that sincerely. I have the evidence. The only sad part is, I ain't repair my house yet. I ain't repair my roof yet. So when I'm dead, if they are successful in carrying it out, I leave my wife to catch hell. That is on my mind. But I shall not weep today, you know, because I'm reminded by what the late successful Wallace Whitfield, the founding leader of the Free National Movement, once said, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. This is the country that we're living in today, where you can be stopped. People come in ILTV studio yard, go to management and say to the manager, today I shall F up Rodney Monker. Wow. Isn't that powerful? That's what happened yesterday. Management only told me when I was about to leave the studio. For had they forewarned me while I was on TV, I would have asked every woman, to come to the studio and stand in solidarity with me. And as they told me what was taking place, as I went downstairs, there was a hall patrol car with two, three, possibly four officers with what we call big gun, machine gun. And I turned, or whatever the gun is, and I, it's an Uzi. They say it's a Uzi. I don't know the gun, them name. 
but I know it's a big gun. And I turned to one of the men in production. I said, Empanese out here to protect me? So they say, yeah. I said, wow, what is the threat? They said, there's a woman parked outside. That's who I turned to? Hain and management? But some Negro, I turn to. Is he a Negro man? He Negro? Like black? Oh, he's a light-skinned Negro. Okay. All right, so I turn to a light-skinned Negro, and I said, them police with them guns? They come to rescue me and escort me? Well, I ain't going outside the studio. Because I don't expect police to show up. But that's what happened. That is what has happened. A woman who said that I made reference to her. Because this is the matter surrounding Frankie Campbell. And she told management. That's what the management them tell me. So the woman says she's going to F Rodney Monker tonight. So what should I put up with this for? When I would have exposed corruption and people deliberately misinterpret it and my life is in danger. Uh-huh. You remember? Remember? I didn't tell you now that when Paul Billy threatened to have me killed or to kill me, my spiritual advisor along with Wayne Monroe was sitting at the table. I didn't tell that to y'all. So he would have heard the threat. Why would Paul really threaten me? His argument was that him and the Honorable Frankie um, Campbell have a sister in common. So if me and my spiritual advisor, please show him and I, have a sister in common, my spiritual advisor, you went to St. Augustine. What would that mean if I say to people, you see the spiritual advisor? He my ma child, he my pa child, but he and I have a common sister. Speak, oh spiritual advisor, but and explain what that means. I, I, you didn't hear that. That wasn't said in your presence, but I want the Bahamian people to know what that means. Yeah, Tell but, them. but you're saying that... Tell them I'm, what that means, and when we come I'm not, back... I'm not your ma, pa, your ma child or your pa child, but we still share a common a sister? Yeah. Well, in my case, all right? Don't personalize it. No, because I share... Per Don't personalize okay. it. Listen right. to me. Just give the example. That's how I well, get the problem. When you don't listen to me. <laughs> I'm the justice of the peace, and I say to you, don't personalize see, I it. I don't want to get on that side of things. No. You see? I want to use myself as an example. No. I don't want you to use yourself as an example. I have my reason for that. Please don't rise above it. Go ahead. It means then. That a man, <laughs> or it means me uh -huh. and you, uh -huh. we have a common sister. Yes. What it but means. But you say it's not your ma, pa, your ma child or your, or your pa child. Then who does she belong to? then I'm saying it incorrectly. You Explain both of us having, you are not, that's what I want to say, my ma child. Do you agree? Right. Are you my pa child? That would have to be. So are you my yes, pa child? Yes, You're yes. not my pa child. You're Salatian royal child. I thought you were talking about the example. Goodness of mercy, the man wouldn't answer the question. And that's why you're in this problem. No, are you, you confusing my, am me. Are you no, child? no. Am I your father's no. child? Right. Are you my mother's no. child? Are you my father's no. child? How is it possible for me and you to have a common sibling? Because you would either have to be the child of my mother or my father. And, and how would I be related to that? Goodness of my sake. My spiritual advisor. See, that's why I tell you when to use myself as an example. I do not I, I, share, I do not want I share no! a sister with somebody. Goodness of my sake. We I have the should. same mother, but not the same daddy.
I share a sister with somebody. Now that's what you want me to say? No. All right. My spiritual advisor is not ruling today. Yeah, I, I don't want to get in that. This is Freedom March. That road you're going now. I'll explain it to you. Freedom March with Rodney Monker will be right back after this. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom Match, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. My name is Rodney Monker. I'm a Justice of the Peace here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And of course, Bradley Roll is my spiritual advisor. When we took an adjournment, I asked him mm -hmm. to explain how would he and I, who are not related by blood, have a common sibling. Mm -hmm. And so I'll do it. It would mean that his father married to my mother and the child was produced his father's child and my ma child okay you don't have to be necessarily married though i agree with you yeah, you don't have to be married you don't have to be married right. yeah. you got the point so that is the basis upon which um paul willie who is a, in the personal political entourage of the prime minister of the bahamas he has come and has been successful in threatening me. And, you know, I, I've been trying to avoid going to court. But last night, there was a Negro female who came. And so the police was there and I said to them, invite her inside. Let me hear what her complaints are. Because I do believe that there are times on talk show that you may say something and people need to complain so that you can correct it. Or they might need you to say the truth. Or they might need to come on the show to renounce it and to say what you said was wrong. Because we are never to abuse the power of the media. I have no right to say things about anyone that is untruthful or wrong or just deliberately hurt people's feeling. And so the lady was allowed in to the studio. And the first thing was when I asked her her name, she said it was not my business. I asked another question. She said, I ain't going to tell you. So I really don't know her identity. And then, of course, I had met her before. I met her the Tuesday after, after, after the public holiday. What was the public holiday in October? All Heroes Day. All Heroes Day. And so she came with a lady who she claimed was her mother. And when I asked what the problem was, the mother said that I called her name. But a comprehensive examination of the document in which a name was called is not her mother's name. It's not her mother's name. I have the death certificate, the death certificate of Edwin Campbell, the putative father of Minister Frankie Campbell. And the death certificate did not identify this lady as his wife. There are anecdotal evidence coming out. And as, as I receive anecdotal evidence, I go to search to confirm it. So I'm working because we are learning that Edwin may have been married more than once. So we want to find the document. But we were accused of calling his wife's name. But the name is not his wife's name. It's not even her middle name. So it's interesting that you could be accused of calling a person name. And when you say to the person, what is your name? I ain't going to tell you. What is your name? It ain't your business. So you're not able to properly defend yourself. Because if the person say, my name is Mary, I would then be able to show and say, see, they say Mary, you miss." understood and even if you had lawfully called her name 
These documents are public documents protected by law. They're protected by law. Now, what do you do? Where, and I'm not taking any phone call at this point. I'm complaining. What do you do when a person show up to complain and you say to the person, what is your name? They say, it ain't your business. Do you know? With the presence of heavily armed police, the woman took a water bottle to strike me in my head with it with the police present. And the police had to step in and say, don't do that. Now, if a person in the presence of armed officers of the Royal Bahamas Police Force are present, and you're trying to come to a resolution, and they move to attack you, what would they do if there are no police? But the police was there. So these are interesting things taking place. So one of the things that I'm going to do, I'm going to go and see the commissioner of police with a view to saying, look, is it possible that you can assign a senior officer with my attorney and the people who are complaining, ask them to bring an attorney with a view to resolving a dispute which has nothing to do with the investigation into Frankie, other than these people, um, also shares a similar name as Frankie Daddy. Because it, I can't be living in a society that is based on the rule of law and people show up to the studio threatening me. That, that, that is not the way the society is to run. And it'd be interesting. Should I tell you where the person work? And the question is, what is to work when they left and camp out side of the, 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 the studio? And then, I didn't like the way the police handled it. They were very professional, very respectful, very courteous. But at no time did the police say to me, Mr. Monica, we know who you are. What is your name? What is your date of birth? Nor did they say to the Negro woman, what is your name? What is your date of birth? And where do you live? So here was an opportunity where a patrol car was sent to the studio to either investigate or prevent potential problems. But they fell down on that. Now I'm a justice of the peace, appointed under Section 5 of the Magistrate Act, with the powers to give the police lawful instruction. But I decided, however the police wish to deal with it, I shall not interfere. Because I don't want people to say, you only tell the police that because you are personally involved. Someone has to say to the police, anytime they show up to any situation, even if it is small as a mustard seed, once they are dispatched there, they have to ask everybody involved, what is your name? Write it down. What is your date of birth? Write it down. Where do you live? Write it down. So that if anything goes contrary, the police has its notes. So they were supposed to ask me my name. My date of birth. Where do I live? Get intelligence on me. The same thing ought to have happened with the Negro woman who showed up. Now, did they do it before the woman came inside the studio? That's possible. I didn't see it. They could have done it when they were outside. But I'm certainly, nobody said to me, what is your name? Even if they know my name. The formality is you ask. Because we're living in a period where people will kill you. And I have to take seriously threats. I have to take 
seriously threats because the issue that I have raised, and in fact that Frankie has raised, do we have Frankie Clip speaking with Daryl Miller? Do we have that ready? Um, Frankie started this when he made some fundamental errors. And then I began to investigate after it was brought to my attention that he was asked if he was straight. And he said he had two passports. So I decided, do we have that? Do we have the video yet? We have it? With Frankie being interviewed? Yeah. Um, bring that up. With Daryl Miller, right? He. Listen. No, no, no. No, no, I don't want that one. I thought you all were given. The, uh, you didn't give it to them, my spiritual advisor? What's that? The video where Frankie uh, was being interviewed by Daryl Miller. Mm, did I get it? Lord, have mercy in the morning. What video you don't? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. So no. why? why, why? Uh, you didn't ask me to. Yes, I did. You did? But we'll not argue about okay, it. Okay, okay. I want you after, uh, uh, before you leave, please send it to him. Why, so is, why is that important now? It is important because this thing, there, there are too many threats. And so I need the public threats, to threats, see. Threats. Now, please, don't, don't, don't call me, cause me to draw you out. <laughs> right? Don't do that, man. I don't want to draw but you out. But everybody has seen the Listen video. to me. You were supposed to send it to them. Let's don't, let's, let's don't do that. It makes you look bad. What? That doesn't make me look bad. It does. How? How because so? you left me with the impression you that never Mr. Man who gave it to you, you had complied. Oh, I, I didn't even know I was supposed to give it to them. Forgive me, eh? Okay. Would you now send it to them mm -hmm. as we are talking? Come on. I'm depending on you to okay, do Okay. Now, how things. am I supposed to do this? All right. I need somebody as a contact. After the show. When we, when we take the next adjournment yeah. or after the show, yeah. you may do it. I need a contact. And then, of course, um, you will ask them for the contact. But I don't mm. want... Listen to me. I am depending on you. And I, I, really, I really won't be independent. You are show. independent. It was given to you because I could not manipulate my phone. Come on. Don't have me and you arguing. People are watching us. Okay, no problem. And I don't want people to assume the... the the voice about you. Yeah, so why if you have the thing and you say to me you're going to send why, it to why, them. Why are you airing this out loud? I'm airing it because I now ask the man for it. Come on. Rodney, you ain't I'm saved, you know. You ain't saved, Rodney. Oh, Anyhow, boy. I'll send it to them. Okay? Do not tell people, and I'm not referring to you, mm -hmm. that you are going to do a certain thing. I need a contact. And it isn't done. I need a contact. It questions your credibility this is a serious matter absolutely where my life is being threatened this is a very serious mat matter okay all right so folks mm -hmm. um i'm thinking whether or not it would working here in view of the fact of death threats see it would not have been too bad if the fellow said i can slap you well, if he slapped me, I could survive a slap. But when people start saying they're going to kill you, when people start showing up, come in the studio and say, tonight, according to the people them who run in the studio, we're going to F up Rodney Monker. Meanwhile, I'm sitting up here, and nobody told me until I was ready to go. The good thing about it was that the police was there outside. But I needed to know in advance. So I could have said to the Bohemian people, listen, there are people outside the studio. I feel like I'm in danger. Would you all please send a thousand person to the studio? In all my life of politics, you know, I've never threatened anybody. Never. Never threatened to kill people or anything. Now I may row with you because I love a good political row. But it's gangsterism. When people start to threaten either to kill you or to show up on your job. Come into the studio, tell the man them what they can do to me. You follow? And then I finish my house. I ain't put on my roof yet. So I think about not the killing of me, but boy, if they kill me, 
And I finished my roof yet and add on the little room. How my wife can manage. Isn't that interesting that that's the kind of thing that I talk about? Or think. But it is against the society. And I'm trying to control my posture. Because there are people in the Bahamas and in New Providence who loves and support me. And I want to be responsible. So notwithstanding the aggression of the woman, I remain relaxed because I have to be sensitive to her feelings. Because she has feelings. And she felt hurt. And it was never my job to hurt her. And that is why, as a part of the rule, documents that contain the names of people who are not involved, I try everything in my power to just withhold the names, even though the law permits me to call the name because the document is a public document. But there are people who are innocent. And this woman is an innocent woman. And I should not do anything to disturb her. But the problem I'm faced with is she shows up, and when I ask her her name, she says she's not going to tell me. So if you say I've done you something, or I call a name, and I said, well, what is your name? So I can compare it with the name I call, and you tell me you ain't going to tell me. How do we really resolve that? But if you say, you call my name, and I say, what's your name? And you say, it's Mary. Then I can say, no. I, see, I didn't say Mary, I say Helen. But if you fail to tell it to me, twice, these women showed up. Couldn't reason. So I kept quiet. And I apologize. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. If you think that we call your name, it was not intended. Because we didn't. Because the law requires that ILTV keeps an authentic recording. Because sometimes I go off in the spirit. And when I come down, while in the spirit, I may have said something and didn't realize I said it. But with modern technology, when they play it, and then I confirm, yes, I said it, then I recognize that the person is being truthful and that I may have hurt an innocent person. But if you don't tell me a name, how are you going to know that I've done it? So that is what is taking place. So I'm getting threats. I am getting threats. And that's what makes me think that I'm on the right track. But I'm no longer interested in running for parliament. I want a good opposition. That's why I'm happy that Fred Mitchell is the chairman. Because it is my intention to say to them, listen, he's chairman. You're an educated man. You're a journalist. All you need is organized political action. All right? So I'm seriously contemplating walking away because I can't take the dead threats. And then they may kill me. This is going to sound stupid. Like, I don't mind if they kill me after I finish the roof and fix up the house for the woman. And then they kill me. But it looked like they want to kill me prematurely. Now you may say that I sound like a madman. I know murder threats. And I'm very concerned when a citizen show up and the police is present and they carry on. It tells me if the police isn't there, they'll beat the hell out of me. And then of course, I don't like to tell people my medical secrets. Because you know, your wife get upset. Your children get upset. Your grandchildren get upset. Your auntie them get upset. I'm a sick man physically. Mm -hmm. And I've been depending on Dr. Dwayne Sands to help me keep alive. And when he doesn't give me the medication on time, I plead to him for it. You might think that I'm joking when I say, oh, Dr. Dwayne Sands, you ain't give me the medicine yet. I'm serious. So I said, and Dr. Swain Sands, give me the medication. You know how good I felt Saturday when I received a call from him? And he said, listen, come. I got the medication. I smiled. I said, wow, look how I cursed out the F&M. And the man is going to give me the medication. And he gave it to me. 
So these are some of the things that I'm faced with. The threats, the intimidation, murder. I mean, living in a country where people carry out these threats. Kill a, a Negro man, you know, Negro life ain't got no value. Chances are mine might wait $250. See, I live in the inner city. I know what's going on in the society. And it's a sad thing that we cannot resolve these disputes properly. I say something, you don't like it, yeah, you could complain to me. And I'll apologize. You see, I curse out Candia Dames and Marvin Dames. Well, every other day, her father say he want me to apologize. And I look at him and say, you serious? He say, yeah, that's my daughter. And you don't like her. And you don't like Marvin. I said, listen, I love them. And I come on the show to appease him. I say, Candia, I'm so sorry. And Marvin James, I love you. Because your pa keep telling me I don't like you. And I said to him, listen, I'll never do you anything. As if I could do that young man something. Because he's a former police, trained. And every national security minister we have heard had a gun. But he passed, say, and I find it so amusing when he said I don't like them. So I come and apologize to them today and curse them out again tomorrow. When they full pa. But my life is being threatened. And as my life is being threatened, there are some biblical things that I learned as a child. And among them is, what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his only soul? Yeah. And I don't like saying these things. And you may not believe me, as long as I've been in politics, you know, I don't fight with nobody. That is true. Some people showed up at the public pump where I go to get my water in Black Village. And they couldn't believe that I was standing up with that bucket as a man assaulted me. And all I did is back on the side, back on the side. And the next thing I know, I had to plead with them because they, they start drop kicking the man. I had to lie to them. Say, no, no, me and him only playing. So they could leave him alone. But that man was about to beat the living hell out of me. But I don't believe in violence. And I'm annoyed that this is happening. And the police, I, I won't be able to get them to do anything. Do you know that I'm being set up now to go to prison? Now, I could take the bait and go to prison. But I just listen to them. That is true. True story. So this is the kind of gangster society we're living in. Tomorrow, perhaps, when the studio produce all the surveillance information around the studio. I shouldn't talk it. I understand Sebastian could see you almost far as the airport. Jesus, I shouldn't say that. So I'll see how far these camera really could work. They say Sebastian could see you from the airport, all kind of nonsense the people them is telling me. I don't know. And I can't ask the man that personal question. So this is society that we're living in. And I only want to say to those people, we are focusing on Frankie. And if your mother is a Bahamian, and you were born in the Bahamas, you're not affected by what we are doing. You see, there's a major security threat that has been committed. And we have to get a parliamentary investigation. So I'm thinking about it. So one day, without notice, I won't be telling you all that I ain't coming back. You just don't see me. Because the death threats. You know, you get shot, then they got to put an nanny bag on you. You know, there's a couple of young men that I know. They got a nanny bag. Imagine the nanny bag. 
So it's a, it's a sad day in the country. It, pray for me, eh? But I don't, want, I don't want to talk to nobody on the phone today. I don't want to get into the emotional aspect of it. Please forgive me. But let us be at peace with all mankind and at war with their vices. This is Freedom Match. We'll be right back after the break. Do you have something to say to the Senator? Call Freedom March at 323-7775. Toll free from anywhere in the Bahamas at 242-300-0045. Freedom March with Rodney Monker, only on ILTV. This is Freedom March with Rodney Monker. Welcome back to Freedom March, broadcasting live on ILTV Studios here in Nassau, Bahamas. My name is Rodney Monker, and of course, Bradley Roll is my spiritual advisor. I'm not going to take any phone calls. We're going to read text because I've just revealed to you how a Negro lady showed up at the studio. I'm threatening, according to the management here, that she was going to F up Rodney Monker, and they had to call police. And when I look outside and saw the police with all them big guns, and I turned to them and said, they come to see me leave? Goodness me, I ain't going out there. And I attempt to resolve it. So we're going to read some texts. Please don't call me. I'm not going to take any call because last night was extremely emotional. So I'm going to go see the commissioner of police with a view to bringing those parties who have grievances and see if we can resolve this okay good okay. afternoon mr monker don't you let no one take bread out of your mouth or your family but good. they have the power to take my life you're gonna let me finish read the text go ahead spiritual advisor good men do not quit this is what the enemy wants trust in the lord for his good and his mercy is enjoyed forever God is your protector and shall keep, guide, and protect you. The enemies will rejoice if you step down. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Good day, Senator. I work at the Gaming Board, and I just want to let you know that there was a massive layoff at the Gaming Board today. Man, Senator, these people, serious. But I love you, Senator, leader of the woman them. I thank you, but... We give these Negroes an opportunity to protest, and they don't respond. But we shall march again, and it is my prayer that they will join the great march. Um, this is what happens, Mr. Monkey, when things are not explained properly. Rodney, your spiritual advisor is a wicked man. He is embarrassed of you because of party. He has sold his soul to the devil. Uh, this is a serious time, and people should take you serious. You can't speak the truth anymore. Put God first in everything you do. And I want to clarify that, Mr. Monker, Please in all honesty, special. while I'm on national TV. That clip was sent to me. Don't call to the person name now. Jesus I have to Lord. tell you that, my spiritual You, you have to tell me that, Mr. Monka? Oh, God. You don't think I have sense enough? Don't do that oh, to me. God. You must not put question to me that costs I don't have enough sense. Strike back. You have to plenty of sense. That's not why you're here. It. But I'm just saying on the... Go ahead. The clip was sent to me yesterday at 7.30 p.m. All right? Notwithstanding all the commotion that was going on around here at the time. All right? When we left here, we went our separate ways. I reported to work at 3.50 p.m. this afternoon. Who am I supposed to send this clip to? Where am I supposed to send it? It's not intentional for me to hide this clip. This clip is all over the country. This is nothing private anymore. It was aired on the Bahamas National Station. All right? So you have people in the ILTV Facebook page and also on WhatsApp. I'm basing me over something that I'm innocent of. I was not trying to hide this clip. It's in my phone. 
uh, management just gave me their email address and I sent it to them. I thank you, my spiritual advisor. Please And there are times me. when you, you, you're going to have to defend me, Rodney. You can stop letting people drag my name in the mud unnecessarily. It's not fair for people to be sending me these texts and calling me a devil. I got the clip at 7.30 yesterday evening. Everybody had left the studio. Only you and I was here. My spiritual advisor, I <sighs> apologize. Oh my God, it's amazing. I will it's let amazing. that one go. What is the Any, next act? Anyhow. Anyhow. Here we go. Ah. Uh, God is good, Mr. Monka, and spiritual advisor. Young man, ding out here. We need jobs quickly. Christmas is on, is, is on its way. Well, I what not. do we do? This government is not producing jobs, and people are and patients is running out with us people on the streets. Mr. Well, Monka. Just hope that Island Luck has enough jobs to hire y'all. Tomorrow, the 27th of October, Island Luck is hosting the second annual job fair at Kendall Isaac Gymnasium. So they're looking for cashers, they're looking for customer service managers, security guards, and much more. So come prepared for on-the-spot interviews and bring along a recent police record, current resume, and a copy of your valid Bahamian passport. The event is also open to family islanders. So please get up early and let them know that you are also safe. Because I've asked them to look at who's safe. Because safe people will work efficiently and not, you know, steal. Go ahead, spiritual advisor. Okay, here we go. Um, the next text. Mr. Monka, help us please. You are our savior. They are firing us at the game board. You know what? Somebody sent me some information. Um, Mr. Monka, I understand that there was some weeping and wailing at the gaming board today because apparently 11 people was dismissed today. And I understand that they have um, quite a bit more to dismiss tomorrow. It's, it's extremely sad. Well, I don't understand the circumstances why these people are being let go, but I understand it is confirmed that 11 people was let go today at the gaming board. It perhaps could have been stopped. I was talking with a Negro man who had sensitive information that will demonstrate, according to him, how the casino has been compromised. I said to him, listen, let's get together and I shall personally go to the Minister of Tourism and set you up so that you can bring the information. I hope he doesn't pussyfoot. Listen, I know the Minister of Tourism. That's why he's washed my clothes. Right? At his place. Get the document. And we will do a run, a break towards him. And we give him the document. So that we could stomp out casino corruption in the Bahamas. All right? So that is what we say. Next text. Yeah. Mr. Uh, good, good evening, Mr. Monka and spiritual advisor. It's time for Ms. Monka to go to court. We are all ready to go to court with you, Mr. Monka. The threats are not good. Mr. Monka, don't play with the threats. Take them seriously. Whoever threatens you, you should put them to court. Spiritual advisor, stay strong. Remember... No, no, no. Hold that for the night. Weeping may endure it for a night, but tomorrow it is our blessed hope and expectation that joy will come in the morning. Go ahead. Spiritual advisor, stay strong. Remember what they did to Jesus. You're a blessing. God's children are blessed. This is powerful. Stay strong. Uh, here we go. Good afternoon, Mr. Monica and spiritual advisor. I went to social services for help because I haven't worked now for a little over a year. And because of the medical problems and surgery I had, they asked me all of my household business. And when I finished, they gave me $50 for a month for grocery. What a really? shame. I the say... Fox, your MP. Fox him. And then, of course, we can march. We can march to the minister responsible for social services. And I could call on her and say, listen, you have Bishop Hewlin Hanna. He saved. You as a pastor, you're supposed to be saved. Then I will tell him about decent Melanie Griffin. 
she was saved when she was in social service. And then, of course, decent Loretta Butler Turner. Every time I went to her or Melanie, they gave the people extra food because I row and carry on. So we could march to, what the minister of social service name? That's um, Pastor. Lanisha Roll, right? Lanisha Roll. Pastor, you're a woman of God. When the people come, you can't give them $50 worth of food. She's a pastor? Yeah. Is she? Yeah. The rat uh. in my cupboard. They then eat up all my food. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Folks, I need a cat. There is a rat infestation and Romald has not bought the rat poison yet. All right? I need a cat. Two or three cats. Because this, this is a big, fat rat. All right? Um, hi, Mr. Monken, your spiritual advisor. I vote FNM, but I can't wait to vote for the PLP because the FNM is pussyfoot and my vote is for brave this time. Mr. Monka. Um, I want to say congrats to Mr. Davis and his team for their wins last night. And I will be voting PLP next time because it looks like my party lost Carmel. Wow. Uh, Mr. Monker, uh, please help me congratulate Ms. my PLP leader, Mr. Philip Brave Davis, and his team from one of the women. And his team. I'm one of the women them in the Michael constituency. Listen, I know y'all are safe. Y'all have submitted to man rule. You only listen to Comrade Marion. Don't listen to them. They're communists and they are anti woman. If they are pro woman, they will lead her to man leadership. Don't mind what Candia tell you. You listen to me. All right? Candia is 40 and she's never been led by any man. Okay? Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Monker. Could you do a follow up? I I'm understanding that the gaming board is firing as we speak. Listen, for Christmas. The FNM has seven, <coughs> 1,700 Negroes to fire. They're just firing y'all because not <coughs> notwithstanding that y'all voted FNM, they're still mad with the PLP. The PLP gave y'all a job so they can take it from, uh, from y'all. You didn't listen to what Fred Mitchell told y'all. He said, listen, these jobs are about politics. If you vote FNM, you can lose them. If you stay with the PLP, we can keep the port sweet. But y'all curse and spike in the backside and went with the red people. And now they're firing y'all. You see what kind of Negroes they are? They don't like black people. The UBP, when it was, the country was run by the county Joe, Sir Stafford wouldn't have do this. If Sir Stafford was to return to the FNM today, he would be disappointed. And Carl Kalmer, I don't care if you don't like it. All right? Go ahead. Um, Mr. Monka, the 37-year-old said priorities for her new government would include raising the minimum wage. Put the camera on the spiritual advisor. Environment, environmental issues and tackling homelessness and child poverty. You all see reduction in inequalities, she said. Uh, good gracious, Mr. Monka. Um, stay strong. You need to report the threats. Uh, I think that's what it says. Um, hi, Mr. Monka and your advisor. Your cameraman cut you at 5.57 yesterday. Um, talk to your producers. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Mr. Monka. Could you send a shout out to my daughter, uh, Rolanda Davis? Rolanda Davis, mommy is proud of you. Is this Rolanda here? A shout out to my daughter, Rolanda Davis. Mommy loves you. Okay. Um, Mr. Monica, that's not a teacher that was twerking. That's a student. Really? Listen, I want you all Negroes to calm down. You've got to condemn that, though. My I'm spiritual not, advisor. I have not heard you condemn the twerking, Mr. Monica. As a matter of fact, some people in this country are so liberal. They're saying that in the 60s, we used to have the one, two step. And uh, what you call that popular dance you did in the 60s? Um, the anyhow, they're saying huh? the electric slide and all this, right? So now they're saying, well, you know, this is now 2017 and we have an up to date modern dance twerking. Twerking is very central, erotic, and it's close to what is called lasciviousness. We should not have our students involved 
in twerking, Mr. Monka. All right, so I haven't heard you condemn that video and those who participated in it. And uh, I think the Minister of Education needs to do something about that, whoever's in charge of the school. And that, that stuff should not be. Our kids are too... Uh, anyhow, uh, let me see. Let me reserve my comments. My spiritual you know. advice. But you haven't condemned that. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. Do not mind these bunch of unsaved people. Yeah. Among okay. one of the person who mm -hmm. asked me today to condemn mm -hmm. it. I remember when that person was lost in sin. That person used to drink rum. So what I get to do with anything? I want you to listen to me. I want to, to you. I, I remember when he was drinking rum. I remember when he was not <laughs> living a holy life. I'm uh, so suspicious. Okay. I'm going to leave the condemnation for you. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's my five cents on that. We got to teach Read our kids. Read text. You're reading text? Yeah. Teach ahead. our kids more positive stuff. Now. Okay. Let's keep them in line. Uh, let's see. Mr. Monker, um, you sending the Haitians to the job fair, to the job fair too? Um, I don't understand you. Listen. This job fair are for citizens of the Bahamas. So if a person is of Haitian descent, you can't prevent them. All right? So any citizen of the Bahamas, they can attend it. And at this job fest, we do not discriminate based on race, color, et, et what? Et ethnicity, and things like that. All we want is people who are not, you know, criminals, who are law-abiding, who are willing to do hard work. Okay? So that's basically it. We, get, we don't care if you're black or white, red or yellow. Just show up. Because island luck is a melting pot. Okay? So just show up. You know discrimination in here? It's qualification and dignity and a commitment to hard work. That's all. You don't see how hard I work? I don't come to work unless I have my facts. You know how much documents I had and I'm in possession of the people sent to me about Frankie? But I am not quick to produce them because I don't want nobody to say, you see, he manufacturing lie. So most night, the woman come and take them from me and say, how long you can deal with this? And I see you read the Bible uh, um, all week. All right, and I say, Bring some olive oil. And then she anoints me and make me read the Bible. Go ahead. Uh, let me see. You have text? Read text because we only have eight m minutes. I hope the police hang on is out there again on, tonight. Hang on Mr. Monka. Yeah? Can I get the MP for St. Barnabas number, please? He promised an old people grocery and they never see him. Uh, bring them. Let me deal with that, Mr. Monk. Monk, okay. I went to check us on Robinson Road. I asked for two meat. They told me no. I went to tell them, Ching 142, curse, curse, curse. You're allowed to do that kind of curse. No, 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 no. You give them what the man name they want. I, I will deal with that. No, 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 no. Give the people the number. They can't. Well, I should give it to them. What's his name? Cartwright? C? Don't do that. A? What you mean, listen don't do me, that? Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me, Mr. Monk. You ain't Mr. Tell Monka, me listen what, to me. What to do? Because don't he is my not MP. Not live on. He TV. is my MP. I'll 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 text the number, Mr. Monka. No, 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 no. Every Bahamian in St. Barnabas must know how to find him. All right, he's a good man, and he has some juicy contracting about. Listen, I've gotten instructions from him. Okay. He gave who instructions? Me. I wanted him not to do that publicly. No, okay? sir. Don't he ain't talking that. to me. Oh, Let's boy, see, Shannon Dog Cartwright. Oh man, don't do that, Mr. Monka. Please. My spiritual advisor, you won't get all the contracts. It ain't that, huh? But this has nothing to do with contract. It's something different. This is grocery. I will give the woman his number privately. Was well, suppose this the rest of the people want no, grocery? No, no. This is one particular text to him. I will do this privately. Why? Are That's you the correct protocol. No, 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 no. You may have filthy Luca. But I ain't got none. <laughs> huh? Let me get the people. Don't do that, man, Mr. Monk. You ain't talking to me. See what he said here? He said, see? Shannon, Don, Cartwright, F&M. This is political. Why you don't want the people to have it, man? 
All y'all want to do is get all the good things for yourself. Ah, uh, boy. Huh? You. Let's see. Great goodness me. I'm not getting it. All right, let, me read, let me read some more text. What's going on here? Good day, Senator. You're so right. When I was in school, we had ring play wine and, and, and shaking the same thing those kids was doing. The only difference is that there was no camera phone. <laughs> but That's all. Good day, Rodney. And spiritual advisor. Let me apologize to the spiritual advisor for them calling him the devil. The spiritual advisor is the devil's <laughs> advocate. Minus is the devil. Wow. This is powerful. Mr. Munker, why is the prison officers being neglected? Well, that's because y'all didn't listen to Fred Mitchell. He said, listen, if you were there for them, that's what's going to go on. But y'all have a staff association. Aren't y'all agitating? And then y'all have a listening ear in Marvin Dames, who is a former law enforcement officer. So, fax him! Fax him! Fax him! Fox him. Good but do it peacefully, okay? Good afternoon, Mr. Monka. I applaud you for braiding the spiritual advisor as to how you conduct your business. Sometimes he throws you under the bus and tries to distance himself from you, from, and especially from sensitive issues you address about the FNM. Now today he's asking you to defend them. Maybe when he de demonstrates some loyalty to you and those who attack you from the public, uh, then... Uh, Anyhow, go a ahead. good full afternoon, Senator Monka. You are a saved man. Your spiritual advisor is a four-sider, and he talks through two sides of his mouth. Continue to pray. Let God fight your battle. Continue to speak to the Bahamian people. They want to hear from you. Please good. pray for me. In the meantime, my spiritual advisor, defend yourself. Good afternoon, Mr. Monka. I understand that 49 people is about to be fired from the given board. What? Can you please help us, Mr. Monka? 49. Who, who in charge of the gaming boards? Listen, uh, y'all stop it. Diagula. Cousin Diagula, please stop it, eh? Don't fire them. How do people get manage? Marvin already said that unemployment is one of the principal factors contributing to crime. Come on. Papa! 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 Papa, talk to them. All right? Papa, please talk to them. Talk to Minis. Tell Minis to repent and give the people their wake back. Give them their job. Goodness of my sea. Good afternoon, Mr. Monk. I hope that you are well today. My husband and I are great fans of your show. Please let your spiritual advisor know that it ain't what people call you. It's what you want to do. Don't worry, I say, about what, what people say about you. God bless you both. This is so powerful. Very encouraging. Go ahead, my spiritual advisor. Gentlemen, good, good day, Mr. Monka, and your spiritual advisor. It's time for Mr. Monka. Oh, sorry. Red alert. Gentlemen, I love you all together. Please, don't separate. <laughs> Thank you so much for the South South ticket, and you are doing an awesome job. Continue God's blessing upon you. Always, God save the Queen. I pray for the Lord's guiding and protection upon you all. We thank you. And of course, may the blood of Jesus cover you. That's very kind. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Monica. I love your show. You're the best, just like the FNM. Bye, Grab. Wow. Mr. Monica, please remind all postal workers of an urgent meeting today at 6 p.m. on Wolf Road. John Campbell. A vacant lot on Augusta Street near Wilkerson Street is in need of a cleaning up. It's by a two-story white and green building. I would be more than thankful if he can send somebody to clean it up. Please. Thank you, Mr. Monka. God bless you. I thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Monka, when will you get the PLP is not even following you up? The Campbell case is done. They know you still love Papa. Sorry, salty, sorry, salty PLPs. Go do your own homework. Be careful with Papa name because in 2012, when Frankie wanted a nomination, Papa mysteriously refused to give it to him. Good afternoon, Mr. Monker. Uh, Mr. Monker, I'm a concerned citizen of the Bain and Grandstown constituency. I would like for you to give the Honorable Travis Robertson a shout out, please. Travis, I shout you out. Next month, you and I will share a birthday. And I'll remind you, Pa, when you're born, and he said to me, 
listen, I had a baby boy born today. And I said, today? He said, yes. I said, well, today is my birthday. That's next month. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Monka, I want you to please visit the post office before you go on your next show. I'm a Cat Allen and a PLP and a Freedom March loyalist. Great job you're doing. A lady was sick from mole and got time or from work. Mole is killing our people at the post office, Mr. Monker. Please investigate it on behalf of the staff. I shall. Rodney, my brother, you stand on the side of truth and justice. You cannot be defeated by the lies and injustices of evil and greedy men and women. Tell Bradley... The MP for St. Barnabas signed up to represent the people. He is out of bounds for aiding and abetting the MP in ducking out on his promises. Mr. Monka, what is your father's name or did you take your mother's name? I had both names. My mother is a Cox and I was the bastard son of a married man. I had to wait for him to sign my papers for me. And over the years, they would sign, and it would be lost. And they would sign, and it would be lost. And then they would sign, and it would be lost. And then one day, when somebody called me a bastard, and I complained, he said, listen, you are my love child. I said, well, the affidavits them keep losing. He said, son, you ain't know you have to record them. Son, do you know you got to record them? So I said, I didn't know. But I did know. He said, I'm going to do it again. And I lodged it for record. I am a love child. Are you a love child? Remember, I'm still promising you bastard day. This is Freedom Art tomorrow. If God spare my life and evil men do not harm me. Take it care. The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Monker, his guests, callers, and advisors on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of ILS, the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without the express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2017. All rights are reserved.